Hello YouTubers, Bruce Allen here. Today I'm going to show you how to remove moss from and clean concrete patio pavers. This is how I turned our patio from a mossy, slimy, stinky, green algae covered, weed infested space to this. A clean, pleasant, entertainment worthy oasis. Which we only use to entertain maybe twice a year. In case you don't want to watch the entire video, I'll start by summarizing my process. Although I do offer some helpful tips so you may want to stick around. Anyway, you first remove the moss with a putty knife or pressure washer. Make any needed repairs to raised, sunken, and sagging pavers. Put down 30 second cleaner to remove years of staining. Power rinse it, and finally fill the joints with polymeric sand. That's it. <laughs> I say it like it's a 30 second job, but it's not. See the information section below to jump to a specific point in the video. Let's get started. Truth be told, the best solution for preventing or mitigating moss is to increase sunlight in shady areas and correct any drainage issues. Unfortunately, cutting back trees wasn't an option for us. They belong to the neighbors and provide us with privacy. So the only solution was maintenance, which once restored, the patio will only require every few years. Step one is to clear the moss and weeds from between the pavers. That's where a putty knife or pressure washer come in. I started with my Ryobi 1900 PSI electric pressure washer using the included turbo nozzle, but after pushing around large piles of stinky muck and realizing how much water I was using, I switched to a putty knife. Keep in mind, if you use a pressure washer, all that disgusting muck has to be pushed somewhere. If your backyard already has a moss problem like ours, it'll make it worse. The moss will choke out the grass. I divided the patio into sections and I tackled them one at a time, hence why I didn't remove all the furniture. Note to self, next time remove the furniture. Using a putty knife, I scraped out all the moss, swept up the debris with a dustpan and broom, and then put it out with the yard waste. Step two is to make repairs. We had uneven pavers that had been pushed up by tree roots, pavers that had sunk in, and others that were sagging. I removed those pavers, paying close attention to the pattern and orientation, and used a multi-tool to cut out any roots. Um, a drill with a speedboard bit will work too, and hey, use whatever works. Once roots are out, you screed the area and compact the crushed stone and replace the pavers. To temporarily hold the pavers in place, I used play sand so the pressure washer could clean it out later. And for any sagging edge pavers, consider using plastic edging with plastic pins. I did that in our herb garden. The next cleaning step can probably be combined, but I did them separately because I was hoping I wouldn't need to use chemicals. <laughs> what was I thinking? Step three for me was to use the pressure washer to remove any remaining debris from between pavers, as well as remove the green algae that had formed on the surface over the past decade. Yes, it's been that long since I've shown this patio some love. My other half was fond of what she referred to as our mossy English garden patio. However, once the weeds came in and the backyard started to smell like a bog, not to mention moss can be a slipping and tripping hazard, she gave me permission to clean it up. Ew. So as before, I divided the patio into sections, uh, and you'll notice that at times too much water puddled up in certain areas, so I used a battery-powered blower to push the water into the lawn and into the driveway. I should also point out that power washing is a messy job. Anything within six feet is likely to get dirty, <laughs> including myself. I occasionally switched from a turbo cleaning nozzle to a rinse nozzle uh, to rinse off surrounding areas like the house, stairs, shed, and fence. Just a tip for drying wet shoes, stuff them with newspaper. Works great. Here's what the patio looked like when I was done pressure washing with water. And you can see the color isn't consistent across all the pavers. There's, you can see where the fire pit was because those pavers are protected from the elements. So I needed to do a deep clean. To deep clean the pavers and kill moss and weeds, I used 30 second cleaner. It's basically industrial strength bleach, which meant safety equipment's required. It gets mixed with water in a ratio of one part water to one part 30 second cleaner and should be applied with a pump sprayer. As with any cleaner, you'll want to test it in an inconspicuous area first, like I did, following the instructions. So you apply and you wait. 30 second cleaner <laughs> takes longer than the name implies when cleaning masonry, so you actually have to put it down and wait 15 minutes. Once that was done, um, I rinsed it off with a garden hose, blew away the water, and scrubbed with a deck brush, although the deck brush really wasn't necessary. Once I confirmed that the cleaner was safe, I applied it in sections using a pump sprayer. And while one section soak, soaked, I applied it to another section. Then I went back and rinsed the first section using a rinse nozzle on the power washer, so on and so forth. My only regret was not having a larger pump sprayer. I must have refilled that thing 10 times. 
30 second cleaner isn't supposed to harm grass or plants when rinsed well, <laughs> but either way, I'm sure my other half wouldn't be happy knowing I was spraying it around the herb garden. Once rinsed, the paper joints need to dry thoroughly, and then it's time to fill the gaps with polymeric sand. I'll show you later why you should use polymeric sand instead of play sand. Depending on what time of year you're doing this project, you'll also want to have tarps available because while the pavers dry, you don't want Mother Nature to be dumping maple helicopters, leaves, acorns, and other things between the pavers. I realized that a little late, so I had to do some additional cleanup with the putty knife and shop vac, and I even used the blower. So a few days later, once everything was dry, uh, it was time to fill the gaps with sand. I'm going to show you this step on our front walk since I forgot to turn on the cameras. So we're going to look at footage from the security cameras. I apologize. At the recommendation of a buddy of mine who's done a lot of patio work, I used PaverMade Z3 sand. It's easy to use. There's no hazing, no dust, and it's rain safe in 10 minutes, although I wouldn't want to test that. Either way, use a good quality sand or you'll be revisiting this video in a year. You'll roll the bag to mix the sand, dump small piles, and sweep the sand into the cracks. Don't push the piles long distances to avoid separating the sand from the polymer. And you're supposed to apply the sand and then use a compactor to vibrate the material down between the pavers, but I didn't have a compactor, so I used a rubber mallet. Not the best method, but it works. Once the sand is down, I idled my gas blower and used it to adjust the sand to an eighth of an inch below the top of the pavers. You don't need to do that. Um, some people like their pavers kind of have that cutout look. Other people like it filled to the top, um, but it really doesn't matter. Once that's done, uh, I wet down the sections. You run the water over the sand for about two minutes and that pushes it down between the pavers. And once dried, the sand creates a nice tight bond which will prevent weeds. And that's why you wanna use polymeric sand over play sand. So here's the patio before and after. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, press that like button like it filtered your favorite lawn gnome and consider subscribing. That keeps the channel going. Thanks so much for watching. I guess now we gotta have a garden party. Nice dog, Dad. Nice dog, Dad? Yeah. <clears throat> now go take care of your patio. It's so worth it. Good shot.